This lesson deals with a sources of different frequencies example. You can find these notes in the ECE202 ebook in chapter 8 starting on page 42. Given this example with three sources where we have two different values of omega, 20 kiloradians per second here and here, and this one is 60 kiloradians per second. So we solve for the current IFT in steady state. Well, it might appear on the surface that we can't solve this problem because we have two different values of omega. But superposition is also true in the time domain, and so we could break this into two problems, solve those with our three-step algorithm, and then add the results together. Let me show you how to do this. Let's set the 60 kiloradians per second source equal to zero. That was the voltage source here. And I'm left with two sources that have the same frequency, different amplitudes and different angles, but that's okay. I'll call that circuit one, and I'll call this current now I1. And for the second case, let's set the 20 kiloradians sources equal to zero. So that's going to be making this a short and this an open. So here's that shorted and here's that open. And I'm left with my 60 kiloradian per second source. I'll call that circuit number two and I'll call the current I of T due to that I2. Now I have two different phasor problems that I can solve and find I1 and I2 in steady state in the time domain. I can add the results together. I have two sources here so I could still use superposition on this one if I wanted to. Let's take a look at trying to do that. So let's convert our circuits from the time domain to the frequency domain. So we'll be doing step one for circuit one and circuit two. So 24 at angle zero with an omega of 20 kiloradians per second, two milliamps at angle 10, 10 K ohms, and then J omega L. So 20 K for omega and 200 millihenries for the inductor. That gives me a J 4,000. In this circuit, I've got eight at angle 30 for the source with an omega of 60 kiloradians per second, my 10 K resistor, and now J omega L. So 60K times 200 millihenries. I get J12K. Let's solve the circuit on the left first, and we'll come back and do the one on the right. So if we use superposition, I'm going to set all sources equal to zero but one. Let me do this one first. We'll set this equal to zero. I can find the current then by just taking this voltage and dividing by the total impedance, which is going to be 10K plus J4K. And then we're going to divide that into 24 at angle zero. So let's put this into polar form. So a little bit longer than 10K going to be in the first quadrant with an angle less than 45 degrees. The ratio of these two is 2.228 milli, and the angle then would be 0 minus 21.8. So we're going to be adding results together, so let's convert this into rectangular form. Punching these again in my calculator, I'll get a length that's shorter than this for these two, and that's correct. I'll be in the fourth quadrant, and this length will be shorter than this one because the angle is greater than minus 45 degrees. Now let's set this source equal to zero, and let's find the current in this element due to this source. So shorting this, and okay, then I've got a current divider. The current would divide this way and then this direction. So the current I1 would be the negative of 2 milli at angle 10 degrees. And then let's use our impedance current divider. So I'll take the other impedance over the sum of the two. So I want the current in this impedance. I'll take the other one, 10K over 10K plus J4K. Again, let's convert these into polar form. So this is just going to be 10K at angle zero. But I got this minus sign here. Let's bring that over as 180 degrees. This is in the first quadrant, length of a little bit longer than 10K. Angle would be between 0 and 45 degrees because this is shorter than this, so that looks reasonable. Now we're going to multiply 2 milli times 10K divided by 10.77K, so we get something a little bit smaller than 2 milli. 10 plus 180, that's 190, and then minus 21.8 is a plus 168.2. Punch this in my calculator, I'll get a real and imaginary part. I'm in the second quadrant, so the real part will be negative, and the imaginary part will be positive. This is shorter than this because this angle is greater than 135 degrees. That would be the 45 degree point in the second quadrant. So this seems reasonable. Now I'll just add the two results together. Add real plus real, imaginary plus imaginary, and I get this result. Punch it in my calculator, I get a magnitude and angle. Be in the fourth quadrant. This is longer than this, so I'll have something more negative than 45. And then the amplitude of this would be the square root of the sum of the squares. So it'd be a little longer than either of these two, so this seems reasonable too. Okay, then we can go back into the time domain by just putting the cosine of omega t between our magnitude and angle. So that's I1 in steady state. Now let's go get I2. It's a little bit easier, we just have one source. So let's take the voltage and divide by the total impedance. So that's 8 at angle 30 over 10k now plus j12k. Push this in our calculator, I'll get a magnitude a little bit bigger than 12k. Angle is going to be more than 45 degrees, but in the first quadrant because this is longer than this. So this seems reasonable. The ratio of these two is 512 micro amps. And the angle then would be 30 minus 50.19. So I get a minus 20.19. That in the time domain, just putting the cosine of omega t between the two. Now we've got omega of 60 kiloradians per second. And again, the units here are amps. Do our superposition in the time domain. 
by adding those two results. This is an example using sources of different frequencies.